Kondu, the magician. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The makers of White King Granulated Soap present for your enjoyment tonight and every weekday evening at this time, Chandu, the magician. Listen and you will travel to strange lands. You will thrill to high adventure, romance, mystery. The magic of Cairo and Baghdad in the East with their strange secrets and mysterious ways will hold you spellbound as our story unfolds. You will come to love this drama as it is played against a backdrop of oriental color and intrigue. And just as you will like our story, so will you like the soap we make. White King Granulated Soap. It is so easy on hands that thousands and thousands of ladies say it's just like magic. There are many tales told on the radio, but only one Chandu. There are many soaps on your grocer's counters, but none like White King. You will love White King Granulated Soap. And when you buy White King tomorrow, save the box top and tell your friends to save White King box tops, too. Now, let the play begin. In the hidden tunnel under the Sphinx, Dorothy Regent has fallen under a sinister spell emanating from the alabaster figure of a priestess of black magic from the days of ancient Egypt. Back in their hotel rooms on the edge of the desert, Dorothy still insists she hears the ominous voice repeating the prophecy of her endless dark enchantment. Chandler, by means of his occult powers, asks the yogi, his teacher, for help. Now, late at night, Chandler and Dorothy have left the hotel unseen, climbed alone to the plateau of the pyramids, and descended to the concealed entrance of the tunnel. Chandu, the magician. Open it, Frank. Open it and let's get this over. Just a minute, ma'am. How you'll ever find the key to the mechanism in the dark? I know where it is, Dot. I'm carving so deep you can easily trace it. My hand of Horus. There. We'll leave the stairway open this time. Have you your flashlight? Yes, but... Oh, no. I can't go down there again. You must not. I'll be right beside you. Now, the flashlights. Turn on yours, too. There she is. Must be Naji. I told you it has nothing to do with Naji. Look at it. Oh, Frank, no. Yes, look at me, Dorothy Regent. Tell thy brother I, too, am beside thee. He knows you're here. Stand still, Dot. Look at me. Force yourself to look up into her eyes. But you said that was the way she made me believe her in the first place. You have to face her now. Look at her. That's it. Look instead at the lamp I hold between my hands. The lamp of evil. Frank, for heaven's sake, whatever you're going to do, do it. I will, but you must do as I say. He can do nothing knife of sacrifice lies upon my altar. The knife? I left it there in my room. Dorothy, don't look away from her. The knife, it is there at your right hand. Take it. Yes, the knife. Put it down, Dot. Drop it on the floor. Lift thy hand. Lift thy hand. Frank, I can't help it. Go away and leave me alone. Don't obey her, whatever she says. Thy hand and strike thy brother down. I can't. Oh, Frank, please go away before Put I... Put down the knife. Kill him. Kill him. Don't try to take it away from me, Frank. Kill him. Look at her. Look at her, Dot. Don't turn away. Now, Oriunda, priestess of evil, listen to my voice. By the eternal flame on the altar of time... The Will not help thy sister. You are banished from day to night, from light to darkness. By all the powers of the Prince of Darkness, I banished into the black pit of oblivion, and there even your memory shall be blotted out. I have spoken. 
My sister is free. Dorothy. Why? What am I doing with this knife? Well, don't you remember? No. Where on earth are we? Why, I must have been half asleep to let you take me sightseeing in the middle of the night. Why, we're in the tunnel. Where we looked for Robert this afternoon? Or was it only this afternoon? Of course it was. Well, this is the silliest thing I've done since I was in college. And... But the queerest thing about it is I can't remember leaving the hotel or any... <laughs> Lapse of memory. Oh, come now, that won't do. We'll go back. And you'll get a good night's sleep. And tomorrow you'll do nothing but have fun, as Betty says, all day. Hear that, man? That's the word I know. It means bread. Now, Bet, you can't say it the way he does. Go on, try it. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you really want to learn Arabic, I'll get you a phrase book, Betty. Well, why can't you just say some kind of a magic word so we'd know it without having to do all that work? Oh, you lazy bone. <laughs> now, if you just knew the word for coffee, you could order some more. Well, I'll get some. Do they always know what you want when you clap your hands like that? Well, what would they think we wanted in a coffee shop? Oh, I know what I'd like to have. Well, since this is our day to just have fun, name it, darling, and you shall have it. A great big double chocolate malted milk. This high. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have made such a reckless promise. Well, don't tell me the glamour of the Orient's wearing thin already, baby. Oh, I know how she feels. You're sure different from last night, Mom. I should say you are. We were scared to death about you. Why? Why? At first, we thought you were just as disappointed because Daddy wasn't in that old tunnel. But then, we didn't know what to think. You acted so funny. I was disappointed, dear, but, you know, I didn't really think he'd be there. I told Najee so. But, Mom, jeepers. I was a lot more disappointed that Uncle Frank didn't find the other man, whoever he was. What man? You know who she means, Bob. The one that's supposed to be in the... In the Suk El Nahasin. Gee, I forgot all about him. <laughs> You're really doing very well, Betty. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? There's an Arab standing right out in front of here that looks just like the one that told us. Oh, you just imagine. Say, that is him. Oh, I wonder if it is. The Arabs all look so much alike. To me, at least. Oh, don't you know, Betty? His nose was crooked as if it had been broken and... Oh, yes. And his beard was kind of scraggly. I'll go and speak to him. You want to wait for me or shall I meet you at the hotel? I may have to go somewhere with him if Bob and Betty arrive. Oh, we'll wait. Unless you're too long, and then we'll go for the hotel. Thy day be happy, friend. Not there, Kerry Cavendi. Are you waiting to speak to me? Thou hast spoken. One day ago, I waited long for thee. No, I'm sorry, I missed you. Where is the man you wanted me to meet? Thou seest him. I am called Ibrahim. But you're not a... You're from the desert. Thou, a Ferengi, knowest this? Your speech, your dress. But what do you want of me? If the Effendi will follow me. Where? To a place where the accursed noises of the bazaar do not deafen the ears. There is a quiet room in the back of the perfume shop. I have brought thee a paper. Very well. Let us go. By Allah. When the sun rises and I am once more in the desert, I will not leave my village. This is the room. Canst thou sit upon a mat like a desert man? Oh, yes. Uh, now, what about the paper you have? Thou wilt buy it for me? Perhaps, when I've seen it. Uh, it is worth much. As much as a fine camel. Let me see it and then we'll bargain. I have heard thou art a great magician. Show me the paper. Mashallah. It is here. You see? Where did you get this? The desert is wide. Many men ride across its face. The name of the man who gave it to you? He said thou wouldst pay well for the paper. If it is part of thy magic... Yes, I'll pay you for it. Here. Ah. But this is not the end. You mean you have other papers like this one? So, 
Thou art a great magician, but thou dost not know the door is locked. <laughs> I laugh to think of the ease with which I brought you to this place. Yes, I see now. It was very cunning of you to bring me here to see the paper. Yeah, thou seest clearly for a Ferengi. Not at all. Someone must have taken the paper from my sister's husband while he slept. Is that not so? Wisdom which cometh too late is worse than none. Oh, I see. You know nothing about it. I know what I need to know. You are only a messenger, useful because of your size and strength. But not to be trusted with secrets because you're too stupid. Dog of an infidel! I thought if I could insult you enough... Mama, shut up! You see this knife? Oh, yes. Yes, I see it. Thou art a magician. But my knife is greater than the magic of Oriunda herself. It is eager to drink Ferengi blood. Oh, is it? Well, I don't need to use magic on you. May Allah change thy face. I will follow you up. Now, caught me, Tabus. No. By the sacred mule of the prophet. Oh, oh yes. Now, yes. with your hands tied behind your back. Oh, son of a camel. Now, just take this knife of yours and cut off part of the cord to tie your feet. Now, tell me. Where's the paper? Take thy infidel hands from me. Well, it's not in your tarboosh, not in your burnous. What have you done with it? By the beard of the prophet, I will tell thee nothing. Very well. You say this knife of yours is very sharp. Me, Allah. Come on, I'm tired of this. Give me that. It is under the sleeping mat in the corner. For your sake, it had better be. Yes. Yeah. On the key to the door. You see, Ibrahim, it's a mistake to think that a magician is less than a man. Thou hast brought me to shame. I shall live to see thee lying dead before my face. You must hope to live a long time. And by the way, tell the man who gave you that paper, as you call it, he can never do me a greater favor if he lives to be a thousand years old. Pause before we say good evening to suggest that you and your family listen to Chandu every weekday evening at this time. Travel with us to strange places and faraway lands and thrill with Dorothy Regent and her children Betty and Bob as they're plunged into the mystery and intrigue of Egypt and the Near East. And of course, we'd like to have you use the soap we make. White King granulated soap. You'll love White King. Anything that can be washed may be washed with White King, with safety to fabrics and colors, kindness to your lovely hands, the only hands you'll ever have. So on your radio, remember Chandu the Magician every weekday evening at this time. And at your grocer's, remember White King granulated soap. No other soap is like it. You'll say, no other soap has ever done your work so well. Good night. Chandu the Magician is presented for your enjoyment every weekday evening. Frank Chandler is played by Tom Collins. The makers of White King invite you to listen tomorrow at this time when the story resumes. Chandu, the magician. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.